Hello and welcome to this Minecraft showcase with me, Groover. Now today I'm going to be talking to you about iron farms on bedrock. As some of you know, recently I've been working on getting a resettable iron farm, or at least the premise or the proof of concept together for a resettable iron farm. And this is what I've got. I've done a lot of research on this guy, I've been doing a lot of tests, a lot of things, because this is very, very different to a Java iron farm. Okay, so the basics of the bedrock iron farm thing is a bit like 1.7 Java iron farm mechanics. So doors within range of villages go to old villages first, rather than new villages first, or the nearest village center first, as it is now. Vill newest village center is as it is now on Java. On bedrock, new doors within range of villages go to the oldest village in range, which is really handy in one way, but it's kind of a bit of a pain in another because there are quirks to this. Because it's bedrock, nothing is going to be that straightforward. If it was that straightforward, you'd just pull in an iron trench and you'd be working straight away with it and you'd be getting loads of iron, but it is not like that. There are quirks here. And that is what I'm really, really here to explain to you guys and tell you about. So let's see, if you want to understand a little bit about 1.7 iron farm mechanics, then really you need to go and watch the iron trench by Tango Tech. I'm going to put a link down in the description. Also down in the description, whilst you're down there, you should find a world download to this. And this is the only thing that you should find in this world is this one contraption that I've been working on. Okay, so if you understand the 1.7 mechanics with the new doors going to old villages, that would seem like a really simple thing to do. But because it's bedrock, it isn't simple at all. There are quirks to this. Now, I've got two really whopping great big quirks that you have to deal with. And the first one is that villagers aren't shared between villages. So in things like the Iron Trench and pretty much every single Java Iron Farm that you'll ever see, each village can share a villager cap. So if we had 20 villagers down here in Java, then all of the villages in this area would use those villagers as population. That doesn't happen here. Each village needs its own 10 villagers. And that is what this is about. Now this little cell area here is set up in such a way and such a distance from where the village centers are that if you have 10 villagers in each of these, then the villages themselves just touch each box. So the last village that goes on this row just touches this box. So the villagers in this one will go to the last village and then moving along, same thing. The villagers are the village on this row will only be able to see this block right here. So you need to fill this up with 160 villagers, okay? Now, that is 64 blocks away from the village center. I placed it here whilst I was testing because I wanted everything in one place. Now, if I had my time again, I would place this way out on the other side, which would mean that whilst this is building or whilst you're doing whatever you want in here, these villagers are going to be unloaded and they're not going to cause you lag. So during the reset, you want the villagers out of the way, so you want them out on the other side. You can work this out, you can have a look at the MBT data. I'm using MCC Tool Chest Pocket Edition to have a look at the MBT data to tell me exactly where village centers are and how many doors are in each village and population and golems. Okay, so now that you know that villagers are not shared across villages, the opposite is true of golems. Golems are shared across villages. Okay, so a little bit of disparity there. If you've got a golem in there set around, it's going to cause you problems because all of the villages in the area are going to be able to see it and it's going to stop them all from producing. So yeah, that's something that's worth knowing about. Now, another big difference is golems will not spawn on slabs. They won't spawn on upper half slabs or lower half slabs. They just won't do it. They can spawn in the feet in slabs, I've seen that, but they need a solid block underneath to spawn on. So that's why I've been going for this spawning layout here. It's not terribly efficient, but it's pretty much all that you've got the choice of at the moment. So yeah, that is a big difference. Now, that's why I've really, oh, well, the main reason I've only stuck to 16 villages here is because of the number of villages that'll be needed. Because you need 10 per village, that means 160 villages. That's a lot, a lot of villages. And that's a problem. That's going to cause you issues. So that's two big differences. The third big difference I've been able to find, and I think this is true from my tests, I feel like I can say this with confidence, that villages 
not villagers, villages can register doors that are valid within their range. Okay, now this is really, really important and it's really, really problematic as well because it means if I've got one village over there and I open up this shutter on the other side and there's no villagers in range, then potentially some of those doors are going to get registered to that village. Okay, not every time and it seems to have something like a 10 second timer but I can't, I can't pin it down, I can't tell you exactly the time that it takes for the village to look for doors within its range. Now I know, or I feel that I know, I've done enough tests on this, that the villagers themselves do a check every 6 seconds for doors within range. So the way that I got the 16 village farm up and going, which you probably saw on Twitter or on a few places, I posted it in a couple of places for people to see. The way that I did that was, I used the villagers down here on the ground. So you see these guys running around. <laughs> They've all vanished into the distance. Thanks guys. Now, these villagers will be able to detect villages in the area. Let's just put one guy down here. Now, if there's a villager nearby or a village nearby, this guy will run to the village. And that's how I've been recognizing if there's a village in, in the near area. So if I go down, I'm going to put down maybe 10 or something villagers. Golems work for this as well. And then we're going to get this going. Where's my villager? He's down there at the wrong end. So I'm going to send him over to the far end over there. And I'm going to start off with one shutter opening at the far end. And this villager is going to see that shutter opening. It's going to realize that the door there's now valid and it's going to register the door, the door to a new village because there's no villages in the area. Now, all these guys down here should start walking in that direction, usually within about three seconds. There we go. They suddenly all move at the same time and that means that they're heading towards the village. That means that that village has now been registered over there. Okay. So if I close that, I press my button, he comes zooming down here again, and heads over to the other side. Now on this side, I've got two shutters I'm going to open. Now, the update order is the same as Java, so it starts off in the north first, which is kind of why I've got it in this orientation. So he's there, I'm going to open those two. Now, these guys should head towards the middle now, because all of these guys have been registered to the oldest village. Okay, and the oldest village is the one on this row here. Okay, now the oldest village was in range of that door there, but it wasn't in range of that door there, which means that that door there became a new village. So I've now got two villages there. Okay, so I know that that's all been registered. The village is over there. The shutters are closed. This is really important. You need to have the shutters closed as much as possible so there aren't valid doors in the area of villages, because if there are, it's going to mess things up. And even if they're not, it might mess things up as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit here and watch these guys. It normally takes about 30 seconds for the village to release. And then we'll see them all drift over in that direction as we're seeing right now. So they're all moving towards where the village has moved to now. So what we've had is the oldest village started off over there, got connected up to a door over there. They all hung around here because the village center was somewhere down here. Then because there's no villager in that area and the doors are no longer valid, then it released from that end and it moved over there. We've now got two villages in this area. Now, if I go one and two like that, I'm going to send my villager down to the other end and we're going to open three shutters this time. And that should give me a new village and then the two other villages that are already over there should link up to the new doors on this side. So one new village and two link ups. And what we should see hopefully is all the villagers suddenly move towards the center. Come on guys, don't prove me wrong. Yep, here we go. This is them wandering towards the center, which shows me that that worked. Now it's kind of handy to know that these guys are linked up to the oldest village. And that seems to be pretty consistent that the new villagers get linked to old villages first. And you know, it's a little bit complicated. You're probably going to have to experiment with this a bit, but it's very handy. <laughs> Let's put it like that. So I know that those three doors are now registered to villages. I'm going to close that shutter and I'm going to wait for these villagers to start moving in that direction. Once they start moving in that direction there, I know, look at that, perfect timing. I know that these doors have been released and that and the villages there are no longer part of it. So that's great. Then I can come up here and put four pieces there. So I've got three, then four. And I'm going to send my villager back over. 
once he's out of range, those doors are going to start cooling down and they might release. So this is where it starts getting a little bit tricky because we've got so many villages over at the other side there. They don't always link up properly. Sometimes before this guy gets to see the doors here, the doors or the villages there see the doors first, which means it messes it up. And I know that it's messed it up this time because the villagers aren't moving. Now what I do in that case is I send them back, I close that shutter, and then I wait for it to deregister again. Now what I've been using a lot here is the MCC tool chest to actually check what's happening with villages. I've been using that a lot. I can't find a way past this inconsistency of the villages registering valid doors within the range because that is a huge problem. It is going to cause massive issues with the automation of this. But otherwise, a lot of the mechanics are similar. So it takes the guy around about six seconds to register a door to a village and it takes, I would say, around about a minute to safely deregister de a village. Okay, so what I'm showing now is the 16 villages version that I actually got all of the doors lined up in and I got everything organized properly. And I just pressed the record button to see this running. Now, this started spitting out golems pretty regularly. As you can see here, we've got one golem at the bottom and there's, yeah, there goes another one. So your average golem rate is going to be around about one every five or six minutes. So this is clearly working. We're getting golems on a regular basis here and that is very, very good. It's going to be the first chance that you guys get to get some real iron in the Bedrock Edition here. Unfortunately, like I say, the inconsistencies make it a little bit more difficult, but you know, that's the way that it is. Okay, so I'm going to put this world in the world download in the description there, and I haven't really explained this system going over the top here. This is very, very messy. <laughs> so the thing is, once you've got your 15 villages in place, you've got 15 villages all lined up up here, and they're all going to be at that far side first. So you want your odd numbers over there, and your even numbers over this side, okay? So you get your 15 villages or villages in place, and what you want to do is you want to start off over here and you're going to open this one first and that's going to send a signal and create one new village on this line. Okay, and that is going to be the newest village and that should be out of range of everything. So you get that village for free. You don't need to build that one in first. And then you can work from the left to the right or from the north to the south because this has got an orientation. This is orientated. That is my north pole right there. So we're going to work north to south and we're going to flick these and we're going to wait a few seconds and what that should do is it should collect the village from over there link it up to the first door over here again then link it up to more doors here and then link it up to the far side over there i'm not going to worry about releasing the doors over there now normally in iron farms you'd think about releasing those doors but um, we'll get to that in a moment so you're going to work left to right and you're going to work down these one at a time you're going to leave a gap of maybe 10 seconds between each one so i press that wait 10 seconds and then move on to the next one and so on and so forth and what you should end up with is your 16 villages all moved over there so this little platform here is the space where you can stand to load in the entire farm and it's going to make sure that all those doors are in place and all those doors are loaded as well within the tick area because the tick area here is really really small <laughs> it's difficult to work with so that helps hopefully as a bit of a guide you don't want to go beyond these markers here when you're doing this final stage here okay Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that I've explained everything at least to some degree. If you're a little bit confused by what I mean by 1.7 mechanics, do go and watch the Iron Trench video in the description by Tango Tech. It's, it's the old 1.7 Java mechanics um, with twists. So if you're aware of the twists and you're aware of the mechanics, you've got a chance of building something like this. Um, I'm not going to go into doing the redstone because I'm not a redstoner. I am not very good at redstone. And you will see, if you look at this world, all this redstone lying around, this is me just being lazy, just trying to set up ways that I can control the doors and the sky accesses. So the basic layouts are really the door locations and the villager locations. Everything else, all the redstone, is up for grabs. And I wouldn't advise taking this on unless you know a bit of something about iron farms in the first place. It's not straightforward. 
So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please do leave a like. And if you've got any questions, drop me a comment down below because I know that I will have forgotten loads of stuff off this. I know, I know there's going to be things that I haven't explained very well, basically, because a lot of this has been just experimentation, experiment after experiment after experiment to test theories and to prove ideas. And that's how it is. No code digging. The only thing we get to code dig around here is the MBT data. And even that's not that helpful, really. <laughs> So anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.